For more than 300 years, the old Y grist mill on the border between Talbot and Queen Anne's counties has been transforming wheat and corn from local farm fields into whole grain flours and corn meals. And for the past 25 years, volunteer miller Joshua Friedel has been at its helm. The mill operated from probably in the 1680s up until 1952. After 1952, it's been a nonprofit. Originally, this mill was a local mill, you know, grinding for the local plantations. And during the American Revolution, the old Y mill actually ground some of the flour that fed George Washington's troops. But believe it or not, mills like this one had an even bigger role to play in another revolution, the Industrial Revolution. I've been poking around this old mill and it occurs to me that places just like this were responsible for changing the course of history. Here's how they did it. The mill captures the power of running water and through a system of gears and belts and drive shafts converted that water energy into mechanical energy, which in turn drove all sorts of machinery. But before we get to the mechanics, Today's batch of flour got its start about an hour and a half south at Cut Fresh Organics in Wicomico County. Here, farmer Aaron Cooper grows organic grain and green beans on land that's been in his family for generations. I had farm uh, about 340 acres on our family farm. I think I'm like the 11th generation to farm here or something, so I'm trying to keep it going. <laughs> Aaron sells most of his organic wheat to a Baltimore area miller but this year, he's donating a small portion of his harvest to the old Y mill. Once the wheat arrives, step two is to power up the water wheel. So I headed over to the mill pond across the road to lend a hand. So it starts here, mm -hmm. and if we lift this up, it'll send the water shooting underground to the mill, which is about 200 yards away. And that gets the job done? It sure does. It's never failed here. <laughs> well, can I give it a try? Sure, give it a whirl. Okay. A few minutes of elbow grease and... Look at that. <laughs> it's getting all over me. A rush of water from the mill pond hits the 100-year-old water wheel, which turns a series of shafts and pulleys, funneling all of that energy into spinning a two-ton millstone. This is what actually grinds the grain but instead of dumping the wheat directly into the stones, Joshua pours it into a bin on the floor. At the bottom of the bin, there's a spout. That spout runs down to an elevator. It's got four inch cubic cups. They're gonna scoop that up and take it up to the second floor. From the upstairs bin, Joshua feeds the wheat between the two grooved millstones. Using his hands, to check the grind and adjust the distance between the stones as needed. Those grooves actually act as a pair of scissors, cutting the grain into small chips. It's one of the reasons why grist ground grain has edges to the grain that you eat rather than what you buy in the store, which is rounded off because they pound it or roll it. Finally, after a second elevator ride, those chips are sifted, separating the chaff from the flour which is ready to be bagged, sold, and baked. Now we can make all sorts of great things like pies, cookies, biscuits, and muffins. And I gotta tell you, these whole wheat muffins are really delicious. We're gonna put the recipe for these on our website. You can try it at home. Go to mpt.org farm and give it a shot. For the local buy, I'm Al Spoiler. Joanne? Thanks, Al. Be sure to check out mpt.org slash farm for all our local buy recipes. And you can watch full episodes there as well. Also, don't forget to follow us on your favorite social media platforms. <laughs> <laughs>